Hello, it's Colin McLeod here with another podcast episode of the CFG Vibrant Bow podcast. Celtic fiddle from the heart to the strings. Virginia. Virginia, right. Um, and Thomas is a professor at, at the local mm-hmm. college. Randolph Macon College. Rick Randolph. Um, Randolph Macon. Macon College and also runs Ashland Music Academy. Music Academy. And we've just been talking about the banjo and you know the instruments and um, a tune called The Old Grey Cat, The Old Grey Cat. And I sort of picked up that tune when I was in Australia with and it was something that the Melbourne Scots Fiddle Club, all to everyone in the Melbourne Scots Fiddle Club, it was something that um, was is part of their repertoire. And Thomas, you've, you've got the, the old great cat, you, you've tied it back to Shakespeare. Yeah, the um, how I know the term was a Grimalkin. So it's the great cat that the three hags, the three witches, was hanging out with them in um, in Macbeth. Yeah. Yeah. So um, that's my was my interest in it, and and interestingly, um, my little icon is the banjo cat. This is really really interesting. <laughs> so if you can see, it's actually um, Thomas is, as I said, his icon is a banjo cat and. Um, when I was listening to Thomas playing the tune, it's, it's almost like the cat sitting in a window and it's actually just looking out onto the street. For, so I don't know, for those, for everyone who you yourselves out there who's got a cat, you know, just the idea about the tune being reflective, it's almost like um, it might be yoga for cats, for example. And um, so, we're starting, the, we're starting this recording right at the, so Thomas knows the tune one way, I know the, top, I know the tune another way, and we're just gonna see what happens, so how, how things evolve. Sure. So, and we've tuned the instruments beforehand. It's a real, it's got 32 bars, 
Um, and they're and a cat. And a cat. <laughs> yes, a definite cat. And I noticed how you started out playing the notes, the melody, mm -hmm. and then also including chords as we sort of played it the second time. So it's almost like the more times you play a tune, the more times the chance you get to hear it. And you notice that we're, we're bringing the tune alive by playing it and just putting something of ourselves into what's happening with the music. By adding something of yourself into your playing, it's like adding water to the music, it's like bringing it alive. And um, that's so the I, most alive part is to add you. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. And it's so, so special to do that. So much fun as well, by the way. And so I was, I was just, well, I noticed that you, you started as more times we were playing you and you brought in chords as well. Mm -hmm. Or Im implying, yeah, I might like on the, I'm using some open strings to, to, yeah. to gain a little of that or, um, uh, just slight harmonies with things. Yes. So maybe not full blown chords, but enough to imply yes. what's in there. We're talking about using the, the open strings. Mm -hmm. and so, so, can you give that a demonstration, please? Well, for instance, on the on the rise where you have the the E G A B, yeah. I'm I'm using the open E string to get uh, a unison note, and then I'm at a minor third, and then a uh, perfect fourth, and a perfect fifth. But when I get the fifth, instead of playing that, I'm getting the, I use the harmonic when I get there. So I'm getting, um, and, and that gives me an attempt, or it gives me time then to reset back down here since I've had to climb up there. Yeah. But that's that's all just implying different degrees against that E minor yeah. sound. And what I'm doing there. sound of the 
the note is so aligned that you can't discern what instrument it is. But it's also night, nice that if you can slightly separate the tone. So if I hear the two notes merge and they're they're sort of lost, yeah. I'll pull them back out of being lost so you can get a little bit of personality from both instruments by like microtoning out with a slight bend. So and Thomas, your idea of microtoning, I use a little bit of that as well. And I use a little bit of that on when I'm placing so like the F on the E string on the first finger. Just and to me it's like placing a magnet on a fridge. Mm -hmm. And it's like it's so so subtle. You know, there's sort of like a um, uh, it, it, it's like a, an aircraft landing, or it's like something landing on the fridge. It's like placing the magnet on the fridge, and you just, it's not like that, you know, it's not like a thud. Right. There's just sort of like something, just a very, very fine um, placing of the, the finger on the string. Yeah. Um, so we give the tune another go to you. Sure. <laughs> My way is back in there. Let's go with it. Okay. Um, sure. And 
then, so I've got up, down, up, down, up, down, up, up, yeah. So I had an, uh, an up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. So I'm, I'm laying out, trying to lay out an even number because it's, it's, it's a lot of times facilitates a smoother switch to strings and you're not popping as much, which can interrupt the flow of the melody. But the interesting part of that is that you end up playing the same note in different locations on the fretboard which makes it sound different. And the idea of like having a conversation, like a musical conversation, and hello, how are you? It's just beautiful outside today. You know, there's a consistency to that conversation, but you might want it to change. Hello, how's it going? It's like the closer you get to Glasgow, hello. <laughs> you know, there's a difference in the accent between Edinburgh and Glasgow. And so, what Thomas is doing is he's putting something of himself into the music so that it's different for each phrase, literally. Mm -hmm. And that's a bit like what I'm doing as well. I'm using the consistency principle. So I'm playing about half an inch from the bridge to sort of like get a sweet spot of sound on the fiddle. And the idea about, you know, using the index finger to sort of like emphasize the note, release the pressure and I'm, I'm releasing, I'm sort of maybe emphasizing the first and the third note in the phrases and something about the tune as well is there's a really a lot of half notes and a lot of quavers and when you're playing Thomas you're the way that you're playing sort of just mirrors those half notes as well. Uh, I'm, try I'm yeah, trying to, yeah. Um, I use a lot of um, uh, what I would, on drum, I would call a flam. Quick hammer-ons, or I'm not using any pull-offs on this, but I am using a few slides yeah. or hammers yeah. to get certain things. And I'm, I'm using sort of some Face notes or the flex B. Yeah. Um, so I'm sort of putting some decorations in as well. Again, with the idea that the musical conversation is different each time that you know it's played. And bringing it alive. Mm -hmm. And well, something that. Something that I would add to that is um, that there's no greater thing than telling a story. And you're, you should be in character, you know, as you tell the story and you should be giving a, pe a part of you to the story. I think a great exercise is to um, take a little vignette and read it sort of study it and then set it aside and a week later tell the story that you read in that vignette in your own way. If you had a class of 10 people that did that, they read it in class, they come back a week later, they tell the story they read the week before, everyone is going to tell it in a different way, yet it will probably have many of the same points. And as, as we play, we're not reading. And again, this gets back to my book-bound theory. It's like getting away from the page the moment you have the information and starting to present the concepts or the story in your own manner. I mean, it has to obviously lock up to play with someone else. Absolutely. And you know, I'm thinking about people who perhaps came over from Scotland or Ireland with their instruments, you know, sure. it's something that they can only take one luggage with, one piece of luggage with them, and something as treasured as sort of like a fiddle or a banjo, and the inspiration, like the storytelling that, that inspires perhaps somebody's son or daughter 
to, to actually go and take up playing an instrument or to learn a tune. So the idea that storytelling goes with that as well. Yeah, the interesting thing about these two instruments, though, is that this is the, it's very transatlantic. Yeah. Because that came here from Europe. Yeah. This came to Europe from here. Yeah. You know, so it's an interesting cross pollination. Absolutely. So we try to play the music again. Sure. There's a Japanese term, uh, wabasabi, mm -hmm. and it's, it's, in, it's, there's nothing permanent, nothing's perfect. I mean, and so you, so as you're, as you're playing it and it has little idiosyncrasies that you may deem as imperfections in it, uh, embrace them, you know. Absolutely. And from, look, look at jazz. <laughs> yeah, look at jazz. <laughs> you know, just people improvising and then. Just look at what happens. Well, let's try that. Okay. I'll play the melody once through with yeah. you, and yeah. then I'll I'll launch into um, uh, an improvisation while you play the second okay. time through. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. 
<laughs> and um, it's Colin McQuarrie, I'm here with Thomas Wakefield, um, professor of music at Randolph Macon College. And you know, if you get a chance to do some work with um, Thomas, I think you'll you'll you, you've got Thomas your outlook with the creativity and just like the inspiration for your students as well. And just how much you know, music is part of the DNA of what we do. Yeah. Um, I think you'll find a very inspiring experience. Likewise. Thank this has been a lot of fun. Thank you. I think it's important to to tell people too that this is only the second time we've met. Absolutely. And the first time we weren't even playing an instrument, we were just having a chat. And the chat was about um, you know, playing by ear. The idea about passing music from generation to generation, people coming across to the US from Scotland or Ireland, other countries as well. And, you know, they, they could only take maybe, as I say, the fiddle with them, um, a minimum amount of luggage, and the music was here, it was in the headers. From and, the, and the stories. Yes. Yeah. And how that sort of uh, morphed as people came across and, and they met perhaps Native American Indians or people from Germany, from France, and just all these different cultures mixing mm -hmm. with, with the music. And I was at um, a local garden, um, it's, um, I forget the name, but it's where they, it's, it's uh, the garden is part of the garden that is in a, a former civil civil war trench and you know just over a number of years the gentleman there has actually just increased the number of buds that a day lily will produce just a phenomenal in a phenomenal way the idea about hybrid the idea about cross cutting the idea about hearing inspiration from one instrument to another and perhaps incorporating some of these techniques and just owning the sound, owning the playing and having fun as well. And when we put something up ourselves into things, it's more fun. It really is. And it's also such a great way to retard. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Well, thank you very much, Thomas. Thank you. And where, where can people find out more, more about your, your school um, and, and also... At... Uh, uh, you can just email uh, at a s h m u s a c ash musac at aol dot com. It's Ashland Music Academy. Um, if you're in the neighborhood, you can stop by and check out Randolph Macon College. And, um, and I'll, I'll certainly be doing that. And we're talking about maybe we're looking into the possibility of doing some concerts in twenty twenty four. Yep, absolutely, that'd be great. Thomas, Thanks again, thank you Colin. Thank you. Yeah. That was another podcast episode of the CFG Vibrant Bow podcast, Celtic Fiddle from the Heart to the Strings, sponsored by CelticFiddleGuru.com and HarmonicsForBusiness.com. That's all for now, folks. See you soon.